Hello there, this is Amy from Made for Math, and I am here today to talk to you about surface area. And before we jump into talking about surface area, I'm going to review area. So you may have watched Matthew's video a couple weeks ago about finding the area of a rectangle. If you haven't taken a look at his video, make sure to take a look after this video. So area Matthew mentioned is simply the space covered. So you can think of an area rug. If you have a rug on the floor in your home, you can think of that rug covering the space on the floor. Okay, and then also Matthew talked about area of a rectangle. So here we have a rectangle that is three units wide and five units long. So we can say that the width of our rectangle is three units and our length or how long the rectangle is five units. So if we wanted to find the area of this rectangle or the space that is covered by this rectangle, or we can imagine this rectangle as an area rug, we would say that the area is 15 square units. I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here. And I got 15, a couple different ways. Um, you can multiply the width by the length, so, or the length times the width. So three times five equals 15, or five times three also equals 15. And then since I have pictures here of squares, I can also simply count up the squares, and I have 15 total squares. So that would be the area. Now today we're gonna to talk about surface area. So surface area is the area of each surface of a 3D or three dimensional object. Back when we were talking about area, for example, this rectangle here, this is a two dimensional object. I just have two dimensions or two sides, the length and the width. When we get to 3D objects, we're gonna have three dimensions. So we're gonna have a length and a width, and now we're gonna add a height, so another layer to our shape. So we're gonna be talking about today the surface area of a rectangular prism. Here's some pictures of rectangular prisms. So we have this building here that's shaped like a rectangle. So this is just essentially a 3D rectangle. There's some boxes over here that are shaped as rectangles. You can't see the other side, but it is a three-dimensional rectangle and every single part of this figure here is made up of rectangular prisms. And then these Legos down here, you have 3D rectangles or rectangular prisms. So a prism is a three-dimensional shape, but today we're gonna be focusing specifically on rectangular prisms. And here's another picture of a rectangular prism. So rectangular prism is just a three-dimensional rectangle. So down here, we have the length of our rectangle. And then over here, we have the width. And the width is right here, from here to here, also on this side over here, from here to here, and up here, and up here as well. And then we have the length, let me go ahead and change colors there. We have the link down here, we have the link across over here, we have the link up here, and the length up here. And now we add that third dimension or that third side. So we're gonna add the height of our rectangular prism. So over here, let me go ahead and turn on the typing tool, we have how tall rectangular prism is. So we have the height here, we have the height right here with this line, the height back here, let me go ahead and highlight this, with this line back here, and then we have the height over here, move this up here, we have the height right here with this line. Okay, and so something that's very helpful when we're wanting to find the surface area of a rectangular prism is to use what's called the net of the rectangular prism. And what a net is, is just a pattern that you can use to make a model of a solid shape. 
So here's a picture of a net of a rectangular prism. And what this really is, is if you had this rectangular prism, so for example, if we had this rectangular prism here, or if we can imagine the rectangular prism as a box and you were to open the box, that makes it a lot easier to see the dimensions of each side of the box to be able to visualize it. I'm going to show you another visual visualization of the rectangular prism in a moment. So to find the surface area of this rectangular prism, we could use its net. And what we would do is we would find the area of every single rectangle that's within this rectangular prism that I've unfolded. So let me go ahead and change to a different color here. So I'm gonna go over here and I outlined each of these rectangles in black. And so you actually have one, two, three, four, five, six rectangles that make up your rectangular prism. So for example, this one right here, we have six sides that if we were to unfold it, that's what it would look like. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna find the area of each of these rectangles. So I'll just start over here with this one, I'll call this number one. And it looks like I have one, two, erase this one for a moment. I have, this one is a three, is for its length by one, two, three, by four. So I know that four times three is 12. So I have 12 squares here for the area of that rectangle. And then this one right here in the middle, looks like it's one, two, three, four, five for its length, one, two, three, four, again, for its width. And I know that four times five is 20. So I'm going to write a 20 in the middle here. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase these just so I don't have too many numbers on my page. Okay, and then I have this other rectangle that's right in here. And I notice one, two, it's three by one, two, three, four. So it's a three by four. And I know that three times four is 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a 12 in the middle. And then this one up here, and you can do this in whatever order you want, it does not matter, is three for its width and one, two, three, four, five for its length. And I know that five times three is 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a 15 in the middle. And then over here, we have a one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five, and a four by five or four times five is 20. So I'm gonna write a 20 in the middle. And then down here we have a three by two, three, another three by five, and three times five is 15. So what I've done is I found the area of every surface of this rectangular prism. So what I'm going to do is take all six of these areas and I'm going to add them together and that will get me the surface area of the entire rectangular prism. So I will need to add 12 plus 20 plus another 12 plus another 20 plus 15 plus another 15. And that will get me my total for my surface area. And I ran out of space here to do my adding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on another page. So don't put too much on one page. And I'm gonna do some adding here. So I'm gonna find, it doesn't matter my order, I'm gonna add these two 20s together first. And I know that 20 plus 20 is 40. And then next, I'm going to add these two 30, or I just said the answer, <laughs> 15 and 15. So 15 plus 15 is 30. And then I'm going to add my 12s. 12 plus 12 is 24. So now I'm left with these three add-ins to add. So I know that the order doesn't matter. I'm just gonna pick the first two numbers first. 40 plus 30 is 70. And now I'm gonna add 24. And I know that 70 plus 20 is 90. And then plus four more is 90 
4. So that means that the surface area of my rectangular prism is 94. And I didn't give any units to this. For example, I didn't say inches or centimeters or meters or so I'm just going to call these square units. So I'm going to say 94 square units. And that, e that equals the surface area of this rectangular prism. That is one way you can find the rectangular prism, or the, I'm sorry, that is one way you can find the surface area of a rectangular prism is simply looking at its net, unfolding it, and finding the area of every single rectangle that makes up that rectangular prism. I wanted to also show you uh, NCTM, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, has this pretty cool animation on their website. And so you can find the surface area, you could also find the volume of this rectangular prism, but it's kind of neat because you can start off with just having your rectangular prism all together. And then if you click on the sides, you can see it open up. So you're able to actually see that net unfold which is really nice because on this picture, sometimes it's a little hard to visualize. So this animation is pretty cool. So you can see the dimensions of every rectangle. And if you wanted, you could find the dimensions or you could count up how many squares and you could find the area of each rectangle and then add all of those areas together to find the surface area. And then if you click on these individual parts, then the rectangular prism closes. So that animation is pretty cool. I uh, hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today talking about finding the surface area of rectangular prisms. Hope to see you in upcoming videos. Have a good day.